million dollars in cuts last year, a hundred million dollars in concessions, and now they're saying not another pay increase for four more years, that's unacceptable. As for the union, BART's general manager says costs need to be contained. Employees pay $92 a month for health care and nothing toward pensions. Their medical and pension benefits have gone up significantly, the equivalent of 1% a year raise. Union members say pensions are needed because BART employees do not receive Social Security. And they say they've done extra work during a four-year hiring freeze with no raises. We haven't had any uh, wage increase in about five years. And now uh, we have a lot of safety issues that aren't being addressed. And uh, we need uh, the board and BART management to take a look at that. Stewart at Concord Shop. We're here to be united with our brothers and sisters of 1555 as well as ourselves to bring to the issue to the board of directors that uh, we are wanting a fair and equitable uh, contract. And why is BART taking such a hard line, uh, hiring a million and a half dollars for somebody to fight you? Well, basically that's where it's always been. I always call it the crossroads of negotiations at this time. But it, no change. We have three weeks left. We have plenty of time to negotiate, and we hopefully they will see our side as well as their side. Uh, see if this guy's budget is really what it says it is. We believe him this time. You know, they're, they're always talking about deficits and surpluses, but it seems like actually uh, they're way overstating their, their deficits, way overstating their, their expenditures, projected expenditures, way under predicting what the revenues are going to be. It's the same thing we've seen since 94, 97, 2001, 2005, so 2009. And they spent a million and a half dollars to hire some outside consultant to uh, handle negotiations. Fourteen people. The truth is, it's much worse than last time. We thought it was going to be nice. <laughs> General manager. <laughs> we met in Hayward Yard. She brought me cake. She congratulated us for our years of service. <laughs> I forget when that was. Was that not November or so? Yeah. November. So, <laughs> Turns out at that same exact time, they already had a contract with Thomas P. Hawk to negotiate our contract. It was stated that there were problems with the unions. You expected you needed to engage or hire this person because you're going to engage in traditional bargaining services, which is more adversarial. What did we see since then? Front page news attacking the workers, overstating our, our pay, our benefits. No attention whatsoever to the assaults that we're facing. So what we're looking for this time, a fair contract. We're looking for a contract that gets some commitment to dealing with the assaults, the violence, and the cost of living in the Bay Area, right? If there's any serious commitment to the frontline people who do this work, there shouldn't be any problem in putting in writing. Yvonne Williams, ATU Local 192, President Business Agent. I'm here today to show solidarity with our sister union, Local 1555, in their struggles to obtain a decent contract. And of course, we're in the same struggles as both of our contracts expire on June 30th, you know, this year. So we want to make sure that the board knows that we have a fiduciary responsibility to the public, the board, as well as the transit workers. And we want to make sure that we keep that fiduciary responsibility responsibility and keep the service going. And some of the members here have said that there's an issue of stress and safety for BART workers. Is it the same with uh, AT192 and AC Transit? Unfortunately, the same issues persist. You know, safety issues, uh, uh, the scheduling, you know, the usual things that, that really uh, cause problems for transit operators. In addition to that, we have an extreme shortage of staffing when it comes to our protective sheriff's department. And the district has, you know, has known for quite a while that they don't have enough sheriffs to really be stricken for our protection and for the protection and safety of the public. I see inside this room here, things nice and quiet, calm, relaxing. And that's what you guys generally work on. So that's how you see the world as far as bar is concerned. Okay? You guys work with graphs, and charts, projections, percentages, yeah. little colored things that look real good in new software. Yeah. <laughs> Workers, us, we work with the crazies, yeah. people who piss all over the place, defecation all over the place. We got uh, equipment blowing up left and right. That's our world. So there's no way, I don't think you guys can really see our world. But you know what our world does? It brings in the money. So you can do all those projects. They didn't call you guys to fix it. No, they didn't. 
and probably called you guys saying, what the hell's going on? <laughs> but when the work needed to be done, they called us. Yeah. When the people were on the platform mad and pissed off, the agents stepped up. You guys have no idea how it is. You know why? Because we take care of it. Yeah. We take care of it. And you know, you know, you know, I would guess you guys don't ride bar to work. <laughs> we ride bar to work. So not only do we help it, we participate in it. We give to them. We give our blood, sweat, and tears. Yes. We put our lives at risk. Yes. Yes. No joke. Does your job involve your life at risk? No. I don't think so. People die. Workers die. Workers get injured. I mean, permanent injuries. Yes. You know, people already spoke on it. And now, we do a good job. We stay dedicated. And now, with all that, Bart's revenue has increased. And what do you tell us? Yeah. We're going to take away. Yeah. We want more of what we give you back so we can do this and do that, expansion, and all this other stuff. I see my time is running short, but you know where I'm coming from. And like I said, it's peaceful now. But in a few weeks, it's going to be chaos. Yeah. <laughs> And you know the thing about it? Win or lose, we can't lose. We'll go back to our job, even if we lose. You guys need to get elected. Yeah. And, uh, the people are pissed off. They're not going to say, oh, Mr. Kelly did this, Mr. Blaylock did this. They're going to say, the Bart Board has to go. Thanks for your time. Yeah. There are days. It feels like a hot spice being driven through my shoulder. You say, and I quote, long-term economic sustainability of BART depends on everyone paying their fair share. My coworkers and I have paid in blood and concessions for eight years. We're not trying to get rich, but we would like a fair contract. In my 17 years here at BART, I've seen taxpayer dollars spent frivolously. Refusal to repair a flawed window system, which is what made me after being fined by Cal OSHA. Or being self-insured, which costs more. Surgery or repairs, fix the windows. Artwork in a palace-like stations, outdated radio systems, unnecessary interlocking C45 and C47. It still don't work to this day. There's still plants and kickers. I understand management's position and the roles they play. They seek to maximize their earning potential. I do not understand the board's position. You are elected to the board to watch out for taxpayers, writers, and employees' best interests. Please don't forget the bar workers pay taxes and vote. Amen. It seems as though you're manipulated by BART management rather than governing. That's not what is expected from, from representatives. You're elected to be their boss, not to their bidding. There's talk of outdated work rules. Nobody talks about management's inability to think this, to use the work rules properly or the fact that they misuse them. Firing people to make an example of them. Violating the contract it was signed to sign in good faith to make a point to save money. Excuse me, to make a point or save money. If the contract we sign is abided by by both parties, those work rules work. There's a rule, there's a name on somebody's rule in the, in the RMP. How much money would, would that save in grievances, or do you guys even look at that? Okay. I feel your duties are to look at and make decisions that are best for everyone involved. Don't feel you're doing that. Mr. O'Connor, yeah. please finish up your time. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm last couple sentences. Sad part is we show up even after all, after we're slandered in the media, we perform the duties and manage a 95% on time rent schedule with the uh, above mentioned issues. Next time some books are shuffled, please make sure you, re you represent us. When people discuss BART with me, I ask them who they voted for for their BART Board of Directors. 
Do you and that's more than a couple don't sentences. Know. Yes, ma'am. And I intend to spread the word that they should know who you are. Okay. Yeah. We represent, we represent the AC Transit drivers, we represent the mechanics, the clerks, the few island employees, the janitors, and we have for the last 112 years. Come on. What we, what I, the reason I'm here today is our members are the lifeline that connects the neighborhood to BART, to service, to work to their jobs, to their employment, or to their doctors, or to their social activities. Uh, for 112 years at ATU Local 192, members have delivered a better life and made transit work for the East Bay. 2013 is what may be called a blue moon. When our contracts, 1555 at ATU Local 192, expire June 30th, I came here tonight to demonstrate solidarity with our brothers and sisters in local 1555 and throughout BART. So we're representing the 1,700 members at ATU Local 192, including the over 200,000 transit riders that we serve every day who believe in what we do. Further, I'd like to tell you that we are in bargaining for a better AC Transit. We're in bargaining for a better BART. We're in bargaining for a better services, for better services for our riders. And the board, your board, and AC Transit's board as well, and all of us as workers, we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we provide the absolute best service that we can to our riders' home. And it's not a way to do it if you're not willing to sit down and negotiate decent agreements Amen. with the labor force that keeps you employed. And with that, I encourage, I encourage this board to put safety first, to ensure adequate staffing to protect the riding public and our ATU members. I encourage you to recognize the dignity and worth of our labor and to approach our sister locals with the honor and dignity that the public expects of all of us. Amen. Our members recognize the leadership and sacrifice of BART workers and we stand in solidarity with them, and they stand in solidarity with us. That's right. As the President Business Agent of ATU Local 1555, I stand here before you with members that have been injured. Those members, please raise your hands. On the job, we have been injured. I stand here before you today urging you to urge management to negotiate fairly with us. As you have already heard, BART has presented us a rubber budget. The figures are not based in any reality. We know that, they know that, and we want you to know that. The fact of the matter is, our members have health and safety issues. That is one of the key components of the proposals that we have presented. We have members here that are still suffering lingering injuries. I was injured on the job in 2003. I am still suffering from those injuries and has caused me to limit myself in pleasurable activities I used to take part in, crocheting, driving a stick shift, and those kinds of things. I can no longer do that. The, self, the health and safety measures that we are proposing are to ensure that the workers, when they are hurt on the job, they are rehabilitated, not checked on by some nurse case manager that doesn't care anything about them. That wants to that our members work hard every single day. Every single day. We come to work proudly. We move the passengers to and from. And we think that we deserve the raise that we are requesting. In fact, we don't think that we know. We have not received a pay increase. And you are expecting us to wait another four years? That is not acceptable. That is not reasonable. And based on what we have seen in real budget numbers, and BART operating in a surplus, that is not going to happen. We want you to know that we have been fair in what we have presented. We expect management to be fair the same way. We urge you to urge management to come to the table and bargain with us fairly, not blaze over when we're talking about agents that have been punched in the face. 
when we're talking about system service workers that have to subdue someone to protect a passenger. Not to, to worry about passengers, a woman who was injured seriously at Richmond Station last weekend. This is unacceptable. Our riding public deserves a safe riding transit system. Our workers deserve a safe work environment. We expect you to enforce that. We deserve to have livable working conditions, and we're not getting that right now. And what we've come up with is something that is not out of the box. It's what we deserve and what we expect. Thank you. In case the board has not read the memos lately, we have a 96% on time record. We have an 85% availability rate on revenue cars. The best in the United States of America. I'm really scared to think what would you do to me or to my members if we were at 70, 50%, like some places are. I know you have a proposal that you can investigate us, that you can send the cops to our houses to interview us and question us. Maybe that's what would happen. Why didn't you get that car out on time? Because some riders could not get on, on the system. Think about it. You want to change work rules? What are you going to squeeze out of us by changing the work rules? The work, work rules that we have in place right now is what got you where you are right now. It wasn't you. I don't see none of you turning a wrench. I don't see where some paper or directive that a manager puts out gets us to 96%. I spoke to a manager in regards to this issue. You know what he told me? Oh, those are the modifications we do. That's why the cars keep running uh, at 96% all the time. I think it's pretty interesting because you're trying to make those numbers a little better, you station EMTs out there paying for them to be sitting on an ambulance all day long, just sitting there in case something happens to the public to make sure the 96% does not go down. But you do not spend the money to make sure we have a safe clearance for our workers that are working next to a thousand votes. So, it's more important to you to have a 96% than to have our members safe and alive. In 2008, you killed one of our members. You are it. You cut corners, you bent the rules. Afterwards, what do you do? You spend millions of dollars attacking Cal OSHA. The agency that exists to keep everybody in California safe. The riders and the workers. But no, you spend the money that you got from us sacrificing giving back to you in 2009 because you got $100 million out of our backs one of those millions of dollars you have spent in, to fight Cal OSHA. As an example, I came up here and spoke in regards to you spending $320,000 to contract a law firm to fight Cal OSHA. None of you cared about it. You really don't. I talked about it. Have you brought it up in the agenda ever again? Has any of you asked the question? Has any of you sent an email out? Say, what the hell is happening here? John has spoken. His members are in danger. Answer to me. You have not done so. If you ask, I'll challenge you to form me that email. Have you said it? I want to raise your hand. John, this is the time for you to talk to us. So you talk to us. We're not talking back to you. I understand. I understand. It's hard when you get challenging questions. All I'm asking is this. Treat your members with respect. Watch out over the workers. That is your job. That's what you got elected for. Watch out for the writers, watch out for the workers. All we ask is for a fair contract. I'm not asking for a big raise. 
I'm not planning to retire tomorrow. I plan to be here for the next 15, 20 years. So I appreciate if you uh, step up, tell management, tell your general manager, be honest with the numbers, and fight for us, your workers, to make sure we get a fair contract and we are safe out there when we do our work. Thank you. The reason I'm here, we started off in the negotiations, or just before the negotiations, with the idea that things would be different this time. We really hoped that we would end up being able to come up with a contract early and a fair contract for both sides. It hasn't gone that way. And I don't know how much you're involved, how much you've seen, but it's very disappointing not only to uh, the employees, but it's going to be disappointing to the public if it comes to a strike. And none of us really want a strike, but if we have to, we're ready to. Yeah. So, we want to ease up a little bit and be reasonable, or you're not at the table, but at least tell those that are at the table to ease up and be a little bit more reasonable so we can get this job done and get back to work. Thank you. Yeah. I come here every two weeks and try to tell you what's going on in the system and maybe someone would have a dialogue with me. I've left several cards um, just to get a chance or opportunity to speak with Grace. So we can go back and forth with some issues, but she's never responded. So I could come here again and say the same thing and possibly have the board act as a liaison to hear our concerns of the union. Well, hopefully we won't make CNN again July 1st. Okay. <laughs> right now, but I do believe this will end with a fair contract. So thank you for coming. Better contract and better working conditions. How long have you worked for BART? 19 years. Are you surprised by the way that the management the attitude is towards the workers here? Most definitely. Most definitely. We need much better, much more appreciation. We need to be appreciated. What kind of work do you do? I'm a floor worker.